while traveling through this world of sorrow. I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I'll understand. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. No more about that mansion. I'm gonna receive as my reward. I wanna know more about that homeland. I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city. some glad day his face I'll see I want to know more about my Jesus I want to know more about my Lord I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive Page Somewhere to my 
Page 107 on the bottom. Page 107.
Like I said, it's good to be in the Lord's house this evening. Like I said, we appreciate everybody that's come out to be with us tonight. We just ask you to mind the Spirit of the Lord. Whatever God bids you to do tonight, that's what we ask you to do. Amen. If he tells you to shout, shout. tells you to sing, sing. So maybe somebody tonight's got a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord this evening. Amen. Appreciate that, brother. Eddie. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart, word, or testimony? Hearts and minds are clear tonight. And we'll open our Bibles up over the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. Genesis, chapter number 3. And when you find your place, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Be- uh, yeah, it's right past Revelation. It's right past that. And once you flip that book, flip it over and start over again. You find it. Amen. You just pray for us tonight. It seems like for about a week now, <clears throat> I've been trying to fight sinuses. I don't, it'll come, it goes, it comes, it goes. And they're just aggravating more than anything. So you be much in prayer about that. Pray for us tonight. Genesis chapter number 3. And we're going to begin to read in verse number 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1, the Bible says this, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God not said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the tree, of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Now ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof, that then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw, when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, and she took fruit, took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard a voice, and they heard the, vo- they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden uh, in the cool of the day. Uh, and Adam and his wife hid themselves uh, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, uh, where art thou? And he said, when he, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I, and I was afraid, and I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, uh, and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And when the man and the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, as she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, to summon myself before thee, thanking you for this day and this opportunity, God, to be in your house and in your presence one more time. I, on this side of eternity, God, I know we're undeserving. I, Lord, I know we don't deserve anything, but because of your great mercy and love, you give us the opportunity, Lord, to be saved. You give us forgiveness by the coming and through the blood of the cross. And I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, for everybody that's gathered out here tonight. I know you've put this on our heart. I know there's a reason for it tonight. And I pray, God, that somebody will get what they need. Help us, God, to get out of the way and just let you have reign, Lord. I pray, God, if there's one that's lost and undone, they'll make their way down to an altar before it's everlasting too late. Right here tonight, God, don't let them put it off. We give you all the glory. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I tell you about a few weeks ago, uh, uh, the Lord put this put a verse on our heart. We'd been, uh, uh, we'd been studying, we'd been reading, and we'd been trying to trying to read through the Bible again uh, amongst our other study and 
uh, I read this verse and it just began to burden my heart and it's burdened my heart for a couple of weeks. I thought that I would uh, preach this some time ago, uh, uh, but the Lord just uh, the Lord never let me preach it and I don't know, we may not do much more than read it again and speak on it just a little. Uh, uh, all I know tonight, but I think it's something that we need to hear uh, and I think it's something that everybody here tonight needs to hear, amen, uh, especially young folks, amen, listen up, uh, especially those that are beginning to get up uh, uh, with a little age and know the difference between right and wrong. Uh, I, I believe it's very important that we get a hold of what the scripture says tonight. Uh, I believe it's important for us that have been around a while, amen, uh, hey, to get a hold of it. Uh, younger, old, tall, or short, it don't matter, it's for all of us. Uh, I see what the Bible said. Now, I know we know the story tonight. We know the story of Adam and Eve and them over in the garden. Uh, but do we ever really think about what, what really took place and what really happened? I was thinking about that garden this week, uh, uh, in the past couple of weeks, and I was thinking about that garden and how beautiful that place must have been. Amen? And I, I mean, it was a place that had all kinds of fruit and vegetables and trees and herbs of all kinds. Uh, the Bible tells us... Uh, Things to be desired, amen. I, I mean, to look around those things and have it good. And I got to thinking in our life, I, I wonder how many times in our life have we had things just kind of had it made, amen. I, I mean, we had everything just like we like it, amen. I, everything going well, everything going smooth. I, and then the next thing you know, life was off the rails, amen. I, it seemed like everything was fine yesterday, I, but today things have began have tur took a turn for the worst. Uh, today things have changed all because something happened. Amen. Uh, one thing, and I was thinking here uh, uh, about uh, about Adam and Eve, and about Eve, and the Bible said there in the first verse uh, that the old serpent began uh, to beguile her, and she said. Uh, Bible said she began to speak to the serpent. Amen. Uh, you say, well, I would have never talked to that sorry rascal. Uh, but the Bible said he was the most beautiful animal in the garden. Amen. Uh, I'm here to tell you the one thing. I think it's very important that we get a hold of this today. Uh, that the devil's never going to present us with something and show us the end thereof. Amen. Uh, the devil doesn't paint us a dirty picture, amen. Uh, he doesn't paint us a bad picture, uh, but he paints a good picture. Uh, this, uh, and I, I was thinking about the, ver here I want to get to, uh, and I was thinking about the ver how the serpent came to her and beguiled her and began to talk to her, uh, and he asked her a question and said, Yea, uh, hath the Lord not said, amen. Uh, in other words, he was saying, hey, didn't God tell you, uh, hey, that you could eat of every tree that's in the garden, uh, everything that's out there is for you. Uh, hey, I want you to know that we live in a world today uh, that want, is trying to convince you people, uh, trying to convince us. Uh, young people, listen, uh, hey, the, wor the whole world's trying to convince you that everything's all right, amen. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do uh, and it be all right, amen. Uh, you can live any way you want to live. Uh, you can act any way you want to act. Uh, you can do anything you want to do. Uh, you can say anything you want to say. Uh, you can hurt anybody you want to hurt uh, and it's going to be all right. Uh, I've got news for you. Adam and Eve found out uh, that doing what they wanted uh, was not all right. Uh, it had its consequences. Uh, I want you to realize today uh, that everything you do uh, has a consequence. Amen. It has a consequence. This amazes me about Adam and Eve. Now look, there they was, and there she was. She began to take up conversation with the serpent. Now before this time, when we think of a serpent, we think of a snake, don't we? We think of that snake crawling on its belly. We think of that slithering thing. John is famous. He loves snakes. If y'all got any snakes. Pictures of snakes, rubber snakes, real snakes. He just bring them to Johnny. He loves them. Them old things that crawl around, they ain't no good for nothing. That's not what Eve was talking to. Before this time, the, the snake probably even walked. Amen. Amen. The Bible said right there that before this, he got the before the curse. Amen. Uh, there's a whole difference. This thing was different, amen. Uh, he presented himself as something awful nice. Uh, 
And because of this, he was cursed. We'll get to that in a little bit. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But what I want to get to here is what the Lord really gave us. And the Bible tells us that he began, she began to talk to him. And he began to tell her, said, look, God don't want you eating of that tree because you'll be just like him. Amen. And this is what amazes me right here. Verse number 6. Chapter 3 and verse number 6. The Bible says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, or food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up, took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. This verse absolutely amazed me this week, uh, the past couple of weeks. Uh, it amazed me for this reason. Up until this point, I wonder how many times that Eve and Adam passed by that tree. I wonder how many times. Now, we know the, the tree was in the midst of the garden. We also know there was another tree in the midst of the garden. There in the midst of the garden beside this tree... Uh, was the tree of life. Amen? Was the tree of life. Do you know what the tree of life represents to us? The tree of life represents to us Jesus Christ. You say, well, why in the world does he represent that? The Bible tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible tells us in the book of St. John, chapter number 3, one of the most famous verses in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. In other words, that he is the life. He gives us life, and there was the tree. I wonder how many times that Eve and Adam passed by that tree of knowledge and never took a look at it. Amen. Never even gave it the time of day. Because the Bible says right there in verse number 6, and when she saw it, amen. In other words, she kept her eyes up until that point. She had had her eyes on the tree of life. She had had her eyes on the other things that God had provided for her. But in this, in this day, when she began to listen to the devil, when she began to hear what he had to say, she took her eyes off Jesus and got her eyes on something else. Let me just tell you something today. And why I want to preach for just a little while this, morning, this afternoon. Hey, we need to keep our eyes on him. We need to keep our eyes on him because there's some dangers if we get our eyes off of it. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, I don't know how many times they had, I don't know how long this had happened or how long it had been on or how long they'd even been in the garden at this point. But what I do know is this, that tree didn't mean nothing to them. That tree of knowledge didn't mean anything to them until the devil talked them into looking at it. Talked them into looking at it. Here's what I want you to realize. They were doing real good. They were doing real fine. Had it made, was there in the Garden of Eden, didn't have to work, didn't have to set no alarm clock up. Hey, hey, youngins, they didn't have to go to school. Hey, man, didn't have no homework. Hey, man, you know what? You want to know what caused homework? You want to know what calls work? You want to know why you got to get out of bed so early? Because Adam and Eve took their eyes off Jesus. Because they took their eyes off the Lord. You want to know why people end up in trouble? You want to know why we end up in heartache? You want to know why we end up off the rails? You want to know why in the world things begin to go wrong in our life? Uh, hey, it's because we take our eyes off him. Amen. Uh, it's because we get our eyes off the Lord. The Bible said that that she saw that thing. And she saw that it was beautiful. And she thought it was a tree to be desired. Hey, all she could see was the physical appearance of it. And God had already.
daddy told her, uh, said, if you eat of that tree, uh, you're going to die. Uh, hey, he didn't mean it, uh, that you might die this very second. Uh, you might die as soon as you bite into it. Uh, hey, but I'll tell you one thing, you're going to die. You know what the Bible tells us? It's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. How many of you know today, how many of you here today know somebody that died and came back alive? Look, if you can't raise your hand, I hope to God you know him before I leave. Hey man, I want to introduce you to him. Hey man, here's what I want to ask you now. How many of you here today know somebody that died and rose again whose name wasn't Jesus Christ? I know he does. Amen. Amen. You know what that tells me? Somebody reads the book. Amen. Somebody studied. Amen. Uh, here's what I want to tell you. Uh, Bible, how many of you here today uh, know somebody uh, hey, who died, uh, whose name and rose again, whose name wasn't Jesus Christ, uh, or uh, he didn't come by and raise him up? Amen. Uh, here's what I want to tell you tonight. Uh, and I want to tell you that we got to keep our eyes on him and how important that it is uh, that you keep your eyes on the Lord. Uh, because the devil will offer up his, he will offer up distractions uh, as often as he can, uh, as many times as he can, uh, in many shapes and ways that he can. Uh, it's important uh, hey, that we keep our eyes on God. i tell you how important it was. We know the story of Moses and how God called him to lead the children of Israel out, right? Out of bondage. And he was leading the children of Israel out through the wilderness. And he was leading them out there. And they were traveling along. And all of a sudden, they were started to come into contact with some serpents. Now, the Bible don't tell me, it tells me the name of the serpent, but I can't remember exactly what it is right now. No, it starts with an A. I think it's an ace or something like that. But anyway, here's what I, I don't know much about snakes, but I remember a story years ago. Danny Cornette back here might be able to tell. I think it was over in Vietnam. They had a snake over there that was, they called that snake a two-step. You get bit, you made about two steps, and you was dead. You was gone. Now, here when boys was, they was out there in the, in the wilderness, um, and they were getting bit with this snake, and they were dropping off like flies. Uh, and Moses went to the Lord. And the Lord told Moses that I want you to make a bra brazen serpent. And I want you to put it on a pole. And I want you to raise it up. And every time somebody gets bit with us, bit by one of them snakes, uh, say, Phil, look up here at that serpent, that brazen serpent that's on that pole. Uh, he said, they'll be saved. They'll be healed. Uh, they'll be fixed. Uh, they'll be okay. Uh, you say, what's that got to do with me, preacher? Uh, hey, I tell you what it's got to do with you because over in the New Testament, uh, Jesus said over there is Mo in the book of John, chapter number 3, uh, in verse number 14, I believe it is. Uh, he said over there is Moses lifted up the serpent uh, in the wilderness. Uh, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, it's important that you keep your eyes on him. Uh, why? Because that's where our help lies. Amen. You're not going to find help out here in this world. This world's going to keep leading you down the wrong path. Many distractions out there. Amen. They come in all shapes, forms, and fashions. Amen. Look, when the Lord came down after Adam and Eve had sinned and done something that God had told them not to do, do you know why Adam and Eve sinned? your book you know why they sin because they got their eye off the right tree and got it on the wrong tree they began to look at things that the devil had put out there for them to look at right let me just tell you something boys and girls ladies and gentlemen I tell you what the devil likes to do he likes to put things out there for us to see because the eyes are what the Bible tells us that the eyes are the light of the body that's where the things began to come in. That's where we began to see things. Look, I'll tell you right now, listen, young girls, 
Hey, y'all looking for a boy? Uh, y'all looking for y'all somebody? Uh, hey, look here, young man. Uh, y'all want girls to look at you and uh, think something about you? Uh, here's what I tell you then. Uh, hey, come up here and be a man of God. Uh, hey, girls, you want to find you a boy? Uh, hey, I tell you, start right here at the house of God. Uh, if they can't be faithful to God, uh, I promise you they won't be faithful to you either. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you, it matters where we got our eyes. Uh, God will provide. Man, you keep looking to him. God will provide. God will give you the one you want. You know, one you, the one that he needs and it's meant for you. Old devil likes to do things. He likes to, he likes to dress the outside up, don't he? This amazes me. Amazes me how people dress nowadays. Amen. And, and the thing... When, we do. We done some shopping over the weekend just at Melissa's. Melissa's getting ready to have surgery, and we know that she's going to be down for a while. And she's trying to get things done for Christmas before she has surgery. And it never. And it amazes me how when you go in and you start looking for clothes for a woman, I don't know why. I don't know why in the world. Why in the world they think. That you gotta have a, I mean, that, that they sew, they sew shirts, they make shirts down here now. You know, that's, that don't, they don't make them no higher than that. It amazes me the way people dress and the things that people do and they act and the way you, the way we sing. And listen, girls, I want you to hear this. Listen. It amazes me how much they want to show and then they get mad when people look. I'm not going to get you men in trouble. Look, let me just tell you what kind of people you're going to attract. Hey, man, you want to know what kind of people you're going to attract? The kind that don't think good thoughts. The kind that ain't thinking pure thoughts. The kind that ain't saying about God. You want you a godly man? You want you a godly woman? You dress and act godly, hey, man. You look for godliness, amen. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, the uh, Bible tells us to dress modestly. Uh, he tells us not to put it out there for everybody to see. Uh, hey, I can tell you what God wants for me. Uh, hey, God wants me to be upright. Uh, he wants me to dress right. Uh, he wants me to act right. Uh, he wants me to look right. Uh, and if he wants me to do that, he wants you to do that. Amen. He don't expect nothing different out of me than he expects out of you. Amen. The old devil, he'll put so many things out there. Now look, that's why they dress that way, to get you to look. You know what you do when you look that way? You got your eyes off Jesus. Ain't nothing good about to happen, I'll tell you that. Hey man, if you make them take their eyes off the Lord and look at you, I'm telling you, you're going to get exactly what you asked for. Get something bad. I've seen so many things old devil's got out there. Draw our attention away from the Lord. They, they, I could preach all night, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things. Amen. Look, here, I, I talk to so many people, and I, I used to be so tied up and wrapped up in sports. And look, I think sports is good for kids. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I think they can teach discipline. I think they keep kids out of a lot of trouble. But here's what our problem is. Most, pe most parents try to live their life through their kids. And we want them to be so, we want them to be famous in sports or, or we want them to push and do all these things. Don't ever let sports get your kids and get you out of church. You know what happens when that happens? You know what takes place when that happens? You took your eyes off the Lord. Amen. You'll take your eyes off God. Your kids will be out there playing sports. Uh, hey, they'll be in the middle of something in a, in a mess, uh, in a shape they, well, you, you can't get them out of. Amen. Uh, I'm not saying sports are bad, uh, but I'm saying sometimes when we get our eyes or focus off the Lord uh, and where they need to be, uh, I promise you, uh, you could be headed down a road of destruction and not even know it. Amen. Uh, I'm talking about worried about being popular, uh, worried about being the, the most popular person in school. Uh, here, I'm telling you what, only thing that really matters. Matters. Hey, you want to know how to be more popular than the pop most When a lost soul comes home, hey, they's rejoicing in heaven. Hey, I tell you what, there's a whole host of people waiting on you. Hey, Amen. We worry about being popular. We worry about being famous. 
worry about making money, being for fame and fortune. We worried about what everybody else thinks. Let me tell you something. The Bible said right there in verse number six that she saw it was a tree to be desired. She said also that it was a, she said it says it was a tree to be desired, to make one wise. Thought she was going to be smart and educated and all these things. Look, I, all that is, the Bible tells us that education, education puffeth up. Look, all those things can make you, you can go to college, you can do all those things. Listen, I'm here to tell you the most important thing you can do is keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. Here's what happens. You want to know what happens when you get your eyes off of him? Let me just give you a few examples and we'll get out of here, all right? Here's what happens when you get your eyes off the Lord. Adam and Eve was walking in the middle of the garden, living up every day. They took their eyes off Jesus, got their eyes on the tree of knowledge. You know what happened to them? Read on down there for just a few more verses. They got kicked out of the garden, amen? They got kicked out. Hey, they had it made, had it so easy, but now they had to go to work. Now they had to strive every day. He tells them they're living. It'll be earned by the sweat of their face. He tells them now that there's going to be briars and brushes, things they're going to have to tear up, things they're going to have to work for. Hey, I tell you, it's important to keep your eyes on God. You don't think that's enough? I'll tell you another one. The Bible tells us that, the, uh, that Israel wanted, their, that they wanted to have a king. And they sought out to have a king. And God gave them Saul. Saul was head and shoulders above others. Big guy. Done some great things. Won some great wars. Won some great things. But he got his eyes off God. You know what happened to him when he got his eyes off the Lord? He lost his life. You want to know what happens when you get your eyes off God? Uh, bad things tend to come into your life. Uh, now, I, I, I was thinking about not only Saul, but I was thinking about old David. We know David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, had his eyes on the Lord. Uh, one day, he was at the well, his wife, his armies were out to battle. Uh, he stayed back at the palace. Uh, he went out onto the roof of the palace, uh, and he saw a woman by the name of Bathsheba down there in the river bathing. Uh, and instead of turning around, going back in the house, uh, he went out, he stayed out there and watched her. And then he sent for her, uh, and then he lay with her. Uh, and and then he had her husband killed. Hey, I tell you what happened to him. He lost a child because of it. I'm telling you, we get our eyes off God. Hey, I tell you, we'll begin to lose some things. Amen. Let me just tell you right now, God ain't going to keep blessing you when your eyes is down there in the field somewhere else. When your eyes are not on him. The same about old Abraham and Lot. They had been blessed so bountiful that they're going to have to divide up. One go one way and one go the other. And the Bible said in Lot, got his eyes fixed on Sodom. Got his eyes fixed down there. I grant it. I don't think that Sodom was what it was when he went down, but what it was when he left was what it was when he went there. But I don't think it was no holy place. It was a place that was well watered. It was a place down there to be desired. It was a place down there where, man, it looked good. Does that sound familiar? Hey, man. He got down there and the Bible said and he, re he vexed his righteous soul every day. In other words, he, he had to go down there and fight every stinking day of his life just to keep his eyes on God. Hey, I'm telling you, it's important uh, we keep our eyes on him. Uh, what about in the New Testament? I tell you about old Peter over there, amen? The uh, Bible tells us about Peter. Uh, Peter said, Lord, uh, I'll go with you even unto death. And just a few verses later, Peter was a following afar off. You know what happens when we get our eyes off the Lord? The Bible said they asked him. said, was you not with him? Was you not with Jesus? He said, wasn't me. Wasn't me. Denied him three times. Even cursed the last time. Jesus went to the cross. Died for our sins. Where was Peter? Where was Peter at? The Bible said after the Lord arose, Peter saw him. 
And as he ascended up into heaven, the book of Acts, chapter number, uh, chapter number one, he said, you men in Galilee, why stand you here gazing? This same Jesus, whoo, coming back. Here's what I want to tell you before that. Old Peter followed afar off. You'll find out just a few verses later, you'll find out Peter went fishing. Not only did Peter go fishing, but he took a lot of the other disciples with him. When you get your eyes off God, Mom and Dad, when you get your eyes off the Father, when you get your eyes off Jesus, you're taking those kids right with you. You're leading those kids right down the same path. You're leading them out there in the same way. Bad things are about to happen. Peter went fishing, took others with him. Let me just give you a little refresh right here, and I'm going to back up a little, or go on a little bit. I'm going to tell you what can happen if you do keep your eyes on the Lord. Hey, I was telling you, sometimes we get our eyes off of him. But thank God so we can get our eyes on him. I, I was thinking about some. I was thinking about this morning, Brother Johnny was talking about that testimony uh, and talking about preacher's kids and, and people was raised up in church uh, <clears throat> and all those things. I got to thinking about old Daniel over that. Uh, hey, when they took old Daniel and threw him into prison, what did he do? He didn't follow after the king's rules. Uh, he just said, give us uh, what God would have us to eat. Uh, hey, they would have fed him uh, over there more things. Uh, they just went over there and eat that old pot, lentils and pottage. Amen. Uh, you know what happened? Uh, they fared more sumptuous than the rest of them. Uh, hey, you know what happened after that? Uh, they had made that decree. Uh, hey, you can't pray to no God. Uh, hey, but Daniel kept praying. Uh, they threw him in the lion's den. Uh, you know what he did? Uh, he just kept praying and looking to God. Uh, and God answered. Ain't you amazed that sometimes how God answers prayer? <coughs> yeah, and I got to think about this today. Do you think Daniel was amazed that God, God shut the lion's mouth? I don't think he was. I don't think he went, wow. You know, if he'd have went, wow, he'd have probably had doubt. <laughs> I think Daniel went in the lion's den knowing what God was going to do. You know why he knew what God was going to do? Because that's what he asked God to do. Amen. Because he stayed, kept his eyes on God. He saw what God could do. Hey, three, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when everybody else was bowing down, they just kept looking to God. They just kept following him. You know what happened? They threw him in the fiery furnace. He told that old king, if we make it, we make it. If we don't, we're in glory. Hey, that's what he said. If we go, we go. If we don't, we're fine either way. I'm a winner either way. You know what happened when they got that fire? Jesus showed up. Amen. Jesus showed up. Keep our eyes on him. Told you there about old, thing about old Peter. There was Peter out there on the water. Peter got his eyes on the Lord. Then he turned his eyes off of him. Peter followed afar off. Peter went fishing. But I believe that bite out there on that old boat. And he was out there casting that reel. He was out there casting them nets, trying to get them fish in. And he saw Jesus. Woo, when he saw him over there on the bank. And he saw him over there and he began to talk to him. He knew who it was. I don't believe from that point on you'd find where Peter turned his back. Uh, he made some mistakes. Uh, he messed up a few things, uh, but he kept his eyes on God. Uh, I can tell you right now, uh, best decision you'll make tonight, Mom. Uh, best decision you'll make tonight, Dad. Uh, best decision we'll make tonight, youngins. Uh, hey, is to get our eyes fixed on him. Yeah. Never head bowed, never eye closed, never kiss and pray, never heart section. <coughs> I ask you tonight. Where's your eyes at? Where's your eyes at? You say, I can't do nothing. I don't know what I could do. The Bible tells us about a story, about it gives us the book of Nehemiah. God came to Nehemiah. <clears throat> told him that the walls of Jerusalem was falling. Told him that Jerusalem was falling apart. 
and he got a burden on his heart. He wanted to go up to Jerusalem to fix those walls. They told him it couldn't be done. The king was going to send an army to destroy it before it ever got finished. But they kept their eyes on God. They kept working. They tended to the wall that was in front of their house. They got her done. They said it could not be done. But God showed up. The world wants you to tell you today that it doesn't make a difference. I'm telling you today it makes a difference, Mom. I'm telling you today it makes a difference, Dad. I'm telling you here, young girls and young boys, it makes a difference when you got your eyes on Jesus. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you've never been saved. Be honest with yourself and honest with God. Just lift your hand up and right back down. Say, pray for me. I'm lost. I'm lost. I've never asked the Lord into my heart. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, preacher, I'm not really sure. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Amen. Give me that hand. Amen. Maybe there'll be another tonight. Maybe there'll be another. You're here tonight and you're not sure. Maybe you're here tonight, you say, Preacher, I know that I'm saved. But I'm just not living for God the way that I should. I want to get close to Him, Preacher. Help me pray. Amen, 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 amen. God sees those hands. He knows the intentions of your heart. Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't. You want to get out of that seat and come down this altar. They, they folks gathered all around you, but they still place for you. They still room for you. God saw a need for you. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe you've lost focus. Your eyes are not on the Lord the way they need to be. Maybe you're not, you, you have a tendency to get your eyes off of Him. Would you just come on down and say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life right here tonight. I just want to give it to you, Lord. Maybe you're here tonight and say, Preacher, I'm doing the best I can. I'm striving, I'm doing, I'm studying, I'm, all, I'm working hard. But it gets so hard and so lonely. It gets so hard on this road. Sometimes I feel like giving up. I want you to just know tonight that you're not alone. But right here is a good time to get on this altar. Give it to Him. Plug in. Get some help. Get some refreshment. Get some energy. Get some strength. Would you come? Would you come? I hope tonight that all souls are ready. Whether you raised your hand or whether you didn't, you've got an opportunity to come here. This is the last verse she's going to play. We're going to the Lord in prayer. No greater gift, no greater thing, decision that you can make.
Amen. We appreciate the Lord tonight. We thank God for all that he's done. And all that he's going to do. Amen. Maybe somebody tonight's got a word on your heart, a testimony, something you'd like to say or do. Amen. Appreciate her wife. Somebody else tonight. Somebody else. Do be much in prayer for her as she's got surgery coming up a week from Tuesday and she's scared to death and worried and, and I know the Lord's going to take care of her but you pray God to give her some peace about the surgery coming up and things that's going on So, and uh, pray for us that we'll be able to do what uh, we need to be done for her and, and for the church as well. We just thank you and appreciate your prayers tonight. Anybody else before we close? Hearts and minds is clear. Be much in prayer one for another. Remember, as you're out and about this week, tell somebody about the Lord. Shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them. God bless you.